conscious speaking to you. Yeah. Fuck everyone that wants to ride the dick now. All right, YouTube, what is going on? What is going on? Long time, long time. It's been a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, but it is me, your boy, Jerese, back with another episode of... We'll talk. And in case you've been wondering where I've been, I've been around these YouTube streets watching a lot of videos from the clouds. I've been on a couple of panels. Shout out to This Might Be Risky. Shout out to Chaotic Truth um, and any other panels I might have been on lately. But unfortunately, I've come to the realization that a lot of people that are on these panels are unintelligent. <laughs> and I've come to the conclusion that a lot of these people on the panels don't want real solutions to the actual problems that face black culture and black society. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So, in honor of that, I shall from now on just dedicate my channel to basically saying, fuck it. I'm just going to talk shit. I'm not trying to help nobody. I ain't trying to fix nobody. I'm not pointing out no societal woes because apparently these issues basically were pointed out in 1987 to the best of my knowledge, as early as I could find. There is a man named Dr. Juwanza Kunjufu who has been saying the same shit I've been saying since 87. So if that nigga's been saying it since 87 and I'm saying it in 2024, chances are the problems aren't going to fucking fix themselves ever and black people don't want to fix themselves so without further ado i introduce your favorite president going to eat some fried chicken with some black people Just clap for that you stupid bastards because we all know how stupid black people are because we're gonna have this lovely old white man even though black people say white people are racist all the time but we're gonna have this lovely white man who said if you don't know whether you're for me or the other white man you're not black but we're gonna invite him into the house to eat fried chicken got it Black people, ladies and gentlemen, the smartest group of people on earth. Let's give them a round of applause. And shout out to this nigga creeping around the corner. Are you guys playing hooky today? Dude? I think that one did. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Miss <laughs> Borla, please excuse Carter for his absence today. But I needed his advice, so we had lunch together. Fred, coming over to the house. President, come. Yeah. Well, here's your food, Mr. President. It's okay. a pleasure serving you. <laughs> All right, man. This is a very unique day, a very special day. I will say one thing: at least they're dressed professionally. But the dreads, we we gotta we gotta get away from the black men with dreads thing. I don't know why dreads have become such a cool thing, but no. Dude, we got to eat dinner with Joe Biden. That's fire, like, the president. And you can literally see the generational difference. Bald. Yes, Thank you, man. Both the Thank sons you, got dreads. Couldn't really believe that the president was coming to our house. Uh, and then, nothing against the kids because they literally don't know any better. This is just them being brought up by their father. Uh, unfortunately, if they ever have a political awakening, they're going to look back at this moment and be like, yeah, assuming that they already don't know what's going on. I mean, this is 2024 and the Internet is amazing, so they probably already know what's going on with the world. And they're probably just like, dang, dad, really, Joe Biden, bro, like 94 crime bill, like he might be old enough to actually research uh, Joe Biden and all of his um transgressions on his own but this little one eh, probably not welcome Rob. we really appreciate you coming to him come on man this is a pain in the neck for you uh this is all great so what we'd like to do is just come into our our space our living area all right well carter you have you want to show president biden uh one of your pictures up here you want to share go over this side and show president biden one of your favorite pictures on the wall. Well, one of my favorites is this. This is awkward. What do you mean by that? You can tell this kid's like, uh, one of my favorite pictures is, you know, like, bro. <laughs> this one right here. Well, we were in oh, Jamaica. That's cool. Well, I mean, you got chicken fingers. You got, you got the whole deal. <laughs> I want the root of. 
making sure I add the hamburger. So tell me what you got. Oh no, how many chicken fingers do the black kids have? The white man has just so happened to go the route of making sure he has a nice hamburger. Because I guess he's too good to eat fried chicken just like y'all dumb niggas, huh? That's crazy. Guys, what you doing these days? Why don't you share about your passion of sports? I'm playing AAU basketball right now. Are you really? Are you guard? Yes, sir. Now, what grade are you in? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Right now, I'm just doing basketball, playing guard on the JV team for my school. How about the school? How y'all doing in school? You should tell the president about the school. Favorite thing. Where's the mom at? I would think that a beautiful black queen would want to be in the same room as Joe Biden because we know how black women vote for the Democrat Party at a 90% percentile, right? thing about it is the business academy I'm in. We get to like travel, so we've been to like NC State, uh, Wake Tech, and we, we, yeah, we went to this small dry cleaning business. And it's just, it's cool, it's a great experience. Well, I'm impressed. Is that a new program in the school? Yes, sir, it is. It just started just a couple of years ago. So what got you interested in teaching administration? Oh, sir, I, I grew up in a rural South Carolina, my grandfather. Hey, me too. Hey, let's give him a round of applause for being from South Carolina. very influential in Ooh, that transition was sexy and teaching me that it would be good for an african-american male to be a teacher <laughs> so that i could have influence positive impact on the youth oh so, god the good old we need more black male teach narrative oh lord <laughs> Oh my god, I almost fell for that trap. Yes, we need more black male teachers to raise these young black boys. We actually do, but I'm being a little facetious because I was almost tricked down that path because my father was a teacher. So, inherently, you know, I think kids are actually slightly better at the things that their parents were good at. Like, for example, my mom was a track runner and my dad was a teacher. So, I think it's easier for me to run fast and for me to coach and teach other people how to do new things than it would be for most people in my experience. So that's just me personally speaking, anecdotally, but you know. It would be supporting in schools. And I started. But me as a black male, I would never want to teach somebody else's kids because y'all's kids are bad as hell. And yeah, fuck them kids. I teach in elementary school and uh, then became an assistant principal and then. Oh, and uh, for those weirdos who may find this video and be like, Oh, you're part of the problem. These black male boys need black male influences. Okay, cool. Then you go do it. Principal here in Raleigh. Are you available? Always. Okay. To the people that you're supposed to be with? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. That's what's most important. I understand you're interested in something I got involved in. Mental health. Yeah. Here we go. Mental health, post-traumatic slave disorder. I can't wait. Tell me how I get I got interested in that. I think I struggled with mental health earlier this year uh, when I got hurt. I went to um, a therapist. I had a therapist. I think it helps. You know, people may make jokes about it, but I think you should just, if you struggle with it, you should try it out. You sound kind of slow for a seventh grader. I mean, I know I wasn't the most articulate, but I know I wasn't. I like I didn't sound like that in the seventh grade. I basically sound like what I sound like now, except my vocabulary wasn't as advanced as it is right now if I choose to use bigger words on purpose. But just talking like how I naturally talk, no, I didn't sound like him in the seventh grade or whatever grade he's in. I enunciated. There's no there's nothing different from breaking your arm and having a mental health problem. I broke my wrist before and I came out fine. What the fuck are we talking about? It takes real courage. Generally, I'm really proud of you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you break your bone, you get a cast put on it, and then you move on with your life. It's uh, really amazing. As, again, a dad working with two sons, supporting two sons, taking care of two sons, uh, student loan was just something that was just an albatross and trying to take care of. Oh, I see what's going on. So he was a single dad raising his two boys who's a teacher who was in student loan debt, 
who got his student loans forgiven by Joe Biden. And so now they're doing a, a press conference or a photo op or whatever this is. This is an opportunity to be like, well, Joe Biden's down with black people. He forgave this black man who's raising two black sons student loans. So, yeah, Joe Biden's a good guy. Go vote for him. Joe Biden 2024, stupid niggas. Wow. Oh, my God. Like. It sounds very evil when you say it out loud, actually. And when that erasure happened, uh, it was such a tremendous... Oh, look at that. That erasure, the student debt. Again, I haven't seen this video before, but I knew it. Am I good or am I good? It's all interconnected, which is why it's so easy to pick apart these narratives. But I got it. I'll, I'll show you what I mean, because I'm also going to change up the way I'd be appearing on these panel shows pr pretty soon, because... When you try to talk just normal and tell people what the hell is going on, you're dismissed. I guess it's because I look young or I talk wide or sound wide or some shit. I don't fucking know. Or maybe it's just me. I have noticed that a lot of black people tend to like to disprove and argue with me specifically for some strange reason. Whether they think I hate black women or I hate black people or whatever the case may be, even though I hate individuals who just happen to be black because I don't see the world in terms of race like most people do because you know we judge people based off the content of their character not by the color of their skin shout out to martin luther king even though y'all niggas pretend like that shit don't exist but it is what it is tremendous relief for the for the home i can't explain uh, how much of a positive impact that it has had upon me but also with their future and how much was it really for you 125,000, sir it's a life changer it was a life changer a complete game changer why did you have 125000 in student loans? And you're a teacher. So let's, 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 just, let's, just, let's just do some quick math here, ladies and gentlemen. He had $125,000 in student loans. Teachers, on average, don't make above like 60 k right? So he was incentivized to go to school, take out an exorbitant amount of loans that he would literally never be able to pay back. But now, because of reasons, the president has, quote unquote, forgave his debt. And so now he has essentially bought this man's vote. Last time I checked, didn't we call that bribery? Wow. So I guess politicians can buy votes now as long as they do it in the forms of student loan forgiveness and as long as they forgive, you know, the stupid black males that'll vote for them and the stupid black women that'll vote for them. And yeah, it's OK, because let's let's just keep it a buck. Democrats know they do this to black people because we're the only people that vote for any party at above a 70 percent split. Like, come on now. And for my life now and then for them moving forward because I am able to do things differently for them. So thank you for that. I tried to wipe out all student debt. And the Republican Party and that's the very conservative Supreme Court that my predecessor <laughs> pointed and bragged about. The Republican Party, oh no, oh no, the Republican Party. They, they were the ones that stopped us from wiping out all student loan debt. Well, we got to make sure we throw that in there so everybody who didn't get their student loan debt wiped out uh, knows not to vote for the Republican Party. Wink. Party went nuts. <laughs> the very conservative Supreme Court that my predecessor pointed and bragged about ruled against that I couldn't do it. I could. Well, based off what you said, the very Supreme Court that your predecessor voted in would be conservative and you're running off a more liberal position. So, obviously, you know what? So I found other ways to do it. I found ways in which there were student loan programs that were had forgiveness written in if you volunteered, if you, you know the deal, public service. And so I started to push it really hard. It's a simple thing for me. I wonder what you guys think. I think everybody deserved a chance. Yeah. Like, what inspired you to become the president of the U.S.? Power. Well... My mom and dad thought you, you had an obligation. Not you didn't have to run for office, but you had an obligation to change things that you, that you saw that you thought was unfair. It always angered me, like I bet it angers you guys when you see someone being picked on. Yeah. See someone being made fun of. But I didn't, I love reading. 
But Joe, you make fun of me all the time. You say if I don't know whether I'm for you or Trump, I, I'm not black. That's making fun of me because you're saying that my brain capacity is so small that I have to ride with you. Otherwise, my racial identity is invalid. Because I'm just so intellectually incapable as a black person to know whether who to vote for. Like, I'm just that slow. I'm just that slow. That I must not even be black if I'm even thinking about Trump. That's making fun of me, Joe. That's making fun of me. In these biographies, you know, Biden knew when he was in high school he was going to be president. I had no idea. <laughs> when I yeah, I bet you didn't, because you barely passed law school, you dumbass. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? I see things that were, just seem so unfair, I find myself getting involved. What did you learn most about volunteering at the church? Think about it. So, so you just got to be a good example, a good role model at all times. At all times, okay. I want the boys to be hardworking, to persevere, understand that they're going to be challenges that they're going to face. And that they were going to be, you know, have to be strong. And we really want to be accountable for the things that we say, accountable for the things that we do. I'm working with little kids like elementary school, kindergarten. Aw, he's in a big brother program to help other little dumb nigga kids. Aw, let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, I'm not putting in any time into raising uh, another bastard whose parents didn't want it. Sorry. I just have to make sure I was doing the right thing. Try to have him follow my lead, you know? When did we get that from? <laughs> <laughs> you turned to 16, man. What are you looking forward to being 16? Oh, he's 16? Jesus Christ. He's pretty... He's not well-spoken for a 16-year-old. Oh, no. Maybe he needs to take, like, a speech or a debate class. He is old. Driving. I'm willing to bet he's taking all the sports stuff, though. I'm willing to bet. I saw him in a football jersey, and I'm pretty sure he plays basketball, too. But that boy can't speak worth a damn. Driving? Okay. What you going to drive? Tessie. <laughs> <It's> Tesla. <laughs> I would want, like, a black Tesla. Oh, yeah. All black. <laughs> or, or, like, a big pickup truck. Okay, I'm thinking, like, uh... 1990 station wagon, you know, something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very safe with that. So, President, what was your first car? 1951 Plymouth. That's very My dad managed an automobile agency. He didn't own it, he managed it. I couldn't have a car until I was 18. I could drive. The, the great thing about my dad's job, he didn't have any money, but the great thing about it, every time he got to take a new car to the prom. If you can train for the night, you get to drive a, a new Chevy. That's so. Yeah, yeah, or something nice off the lot. Yeah. As you know, owning a car is a big deal to this physical safety. Because what I right. wish a lot of luck, man, you're <laughs> two years at me. As I'm raising two young men, and, and you had the pleasure of raising two young men, what, what advice would you give me to Keep in my mind as I'm raising these boys here. If you don't know whether you're for me or Trump, you ain't black. <laughs> It'd be funny if you just said that. Well, for me, it was. Imagine if I actually clipped it. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Thank God I'm lazy. Thank God I'm too lazy to actually edit my videos. Just hold to certain basic rules. One of them is. But be honest. And two, you're going to make mistakes. But just get back up. You know how much this guy loves you. Okay. You just feel it, can't you? Yes, sir. Your dad jumped in front of a bull for you. By the way, we dads are hard to raise once you're a teenager. Jesus Christ. Joe Biden's voice is so gone, the subtitles can't even capture him, right? That's horrible. We're hard to raise. So you got to be patient with us, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Be patient. <laughs> I'm formally inviting you to come to the White House to see me. And you got to make me promise that one of you guys are president. And they say, Joe Biden, down the way you, you promise you won't say to your secretary, Joe, who? Okay. <laughs> a deal? Wait, hold on. I didn't even understand what he said. And 
they say, Joe Biden out in the waiting room, you promise you won't say to your secretary, Joe who? Okay. Uh, in the waiting room, you promise you won't say to your secretary, Joe who? Okay. Uh, uh, deal? Deal. All right. I don't even know what he said. But the president, this is a- After three attempts to listen to it, I legit don't know what the fuck he said. Uh, not company that we're, we're accustomed to having. Seeing them just have a conversation with President Biden was just unreal. I'm speechless. I'm super proud. Right, uh, did a great job in just being your authentic self. It just happened to be 46. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> it's crazy. You were just how to be. That's an experience of a lifetime. Lunch with the press. Lunch with the press. All right, let's go. We back inside. I'm freezing. We back inside. Yeah. Nigga, where else are you gonna go? The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he's going to be a LeBron James. <laughs> he's going to be a hooper. He's going to be an athlete. Not so much of an intellectual. So what do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? Joe Biden being Joe Biden, um, appealing to black people in the only way the Democrats know how. Um, food and colloquialism. So fried chicken and um, hot sauce in the bag and, you know, things of that nature. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I have, I have something to show you before I go, before I go. Um, let me see, let me pull up my YouTube, hang on, just, just hang tight, just hang tight, hang tight. Let me see if I can find it. Because I know if you're over here, then you know... <laughs> about the narrative that's been going on, bare minimum, right? So, let me see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Where is it? Um, just bear with me, kids. Looking for a... Women of Gen Z, main of Gen Z, yeah. Would you, would you keep talking? phone calls back in the 90s all right here let me see if i can find it real quick <laughs> early 2000s yeah man we had to you had to call the house you know okay. so you had to and there's gonna be people that spread the degeneracy and you can't do nothing about it damn that shit sound crazy jim what's your take man man put them in the bathroom These niggas. <laughs> okay hold on okay so the premise of the question is homosexuality, why is it running rampant among Gen Z and millennials, right? So that's the question that DJ Hamp asked, the host of the podcast. So this is me on This Might Be Risky. You can't see the channel name because my body's in the way. Here, let me do it like this. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, and then here, just so it doesn't look awkward, I'll flip it. There you go. So yeah, This Might Be Risky. Go, like, share, subscribe, all that good jazz. Put, 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 put him in the fucking bathroom. Get him out of here. Come on. Let me Why? see if Please. I can find this the part. Like, yeah, that's part of the problem. Like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite line right there. Bro. Niggas like, y'all, that's part of the problem. Because everything I do and everything I say is always part of the problem. People that can have potential. Um, they would beg to differ, but. Um... Okay. Are you going into. What's the. Main... All right. Here the it is. Media is promoting the degeneracy. Degeneracy, right? So I'm about to get on. Nah, 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 nah. All right, hold on, shot time. I'm about to get on you next. God damn it! All right, but no, answer. So the, Jesus, ask the question again, how? Um, it's just the you know, like. Damn, my hair was looking good. Jesus, I need to curl my hair. Yeah, I mean, it looks all right. It looks all right, but I need to curl that joint real quick. All right, but anyway, hold on. So listen to this, and while. This is going on. Let me play. Let me get my other clip up. The the rise in degeneracy, right? Mm-hmm. In now in our in our country, right? And you have your generation, which just seems like leads in in the de- degeneracy, right? And I was asking, um, Jeff, you know, if you don't, what does it say? Um, if you don't speak up against it, you are for. There's like a there's like a a cliche. Yeah. It's yeah. like if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything or something like that. Something like that. Something yeah, like that. I, I think I know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, so what's up, man? Jeff said he mind his own business and shit going haywire around him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to look at it like this, Ham. The media is promoting the degeneracy, and it's, it's kind of like a selective eugenics program, right? So look at the rainbow community flag. Okay. They added black and brown to it. Why do you And then what do we hear all the politicians say? We need more representation. We need more black and brown bodies, diversity, equity, and inclusion, black and brown neighborhoods. They've been giving us the answer, right? And this is no shade to hemp. This is no shade to hemp, but I'm saying in general, people who are older than me always look to disqualify me, especially if they're black, just like me. So do you think they added black and brown to the rainbow community flag? What are those two colors stand for? For minority people. Like what? Like who? Black brown. and brown. Yeah. Nah. Blacks, blacks nah. and Mexicans. Nah. Hell no. Nah. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Like when they say black and brown people. And then notice, got be nice. He nodding. Shy Town already knew where I was going. I'm sure Jeff already knew since the question was directed to him and cheeky. Cheeky is my new favorite content creator because he gives me hope that there is. People with above room temperature IQ left in the world besides me. Well, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about us and Mexicans. So they look at that cheeky nose. Put that on the gay flag because they want black people to stop breeding. Because guess what? Gay people be can't nice do nose. They can't breed, right? Jeff looks like he's like finding out some new information. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Jerez. I mean, Jerez, is this. Uh... Are you going into what's the thing? Conspiracy? conspiracy. No, nah, it's not. A, it's not even a conspiracy. The brown is for transgender. No, sir. No. What? What does brown have to do with transgender? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead ass. Use your mind. This Bro. nigga. <laughs> Fudge Packer. <laughs> it don't be that Bro. deep, nigga. You think shit be all deep? It don't be that deep, bro. All right, Risky. All right. <laughs> all right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And then notice the comments. People in the comments knew what I was talking about, but <laughs> it's okay. It's it's older people. They think I'm just young. I'm just a young bull. I haven't lived long enough. I don't know what I'm talking about, but <sighs> it's okay. I'm, I'm about to legit be on my villain arc, but... Before I let y'all go, this is this is the video I'm going to leave y'all with. This is my mantra from now on, right? This is one of my favorite quotes to live by. Just just listen to it, just take it in and just accept it for what it is cuz it is it is one of the most beautiful and poetic sequences, lines, voice lines to ever come out of anime ever in existence and I just oh, it gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. Because I take this philosophy with me every single day I leave my apartment. And I embrace it, and I learn something new every day. You heard what I said and then called me a liar. Now you refuse to believe what I've shared. Your mind may not want to accept these revelations. But inside you there's a voice saying, accept it, it's the truth. <laughs> Soon you'll, you'll know. Time, time will help. help. I feel I'm so sorry, sorry about, about your confusion, confusion but this, but this world's, world's never really been, been about truth or lies. lies. In this, In this world, world, there's, there's only, only one thing that's, that's worth knowing. knowing. Hard facts. Despite this universal truth, people, people misguidingly, misguidingly choose to only accept the facts, facts that appeal to their way, way of thinking. thinking. They're so limited, they can only accept <laughs> the truths that are comfortable for them. Telling so, you. This is simply about wanting to hang on to your personal power. Realizing things may not have been as we accepted them to be unsettles us. It's overwhelming. Are you absolutely, absolutely sure, sure you, you know, know the, the truth? truth? <sighs> and then, guys, if you just live every day just thinking that before you walk out the door and before you put the key into your lock to lock the door to get in your car to go to work, I promise you will be a more intelligent person every single day. But with that, I have been your host, Jerice, back with an extended version of Real Talk. I have a lovely interview with a lady on Saturday on this channel, and there's going to be more videos later this week. So y'all have a good one, and I'm out. I'll be posting this in Discord and Chaotix channel and um, Anton Daniels' channel, and yeah. So y'all be easy. I'll catch y'all next time. I'm gone. Before you go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up your skull, stop living life blind. Before you go.
go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up, just gonna stop living like blind. Before you go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up, just gonna stop living like blind. Before you go, you need to tap into your mind. Open up.